everyone, good morning. My name is Cassandra and I'm gonna take you through this short morning yoga practice. This is a strength building flow. So really going to be activating and engaging our muscles. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more of a workout, that's definitely a great way to get a boost of energy in the morning. Of course, I will add some stretchier, slower moving uh, poses just to make sure that you're all warmed up and feeling really good for the day ahead. But really, our main primary focus is on building strength, full body, so more of an intermediate practice and no props are required. We're going to start in Balasana, the way I start probably, I don't know, 90% of my classes. Big toes together, knees apart, and before we really start to build up that heat, just stretch out through your hips, pushing your hips back towards your heels, reach your arms out, and melt on down. And you still wanna have your shoulders pressing away from your ears, so you're not shortening through your neck. And just take a few deep breaths in and out through your nose. Making this first connection with yourself. A morning yoga practice can help you set the tone for the day ahead. It can help you set an intention. So that even when we're doing these practices that are really physical, we can still find some mindful connection. We can make these practices intentional and meaningful so that the work we do on the mat can also carry on throughout our day, going beyond just our morning yoga practice. So take three more deep breaths here, maybe just starting to ask yourself what your intention is today. It might just be one word. And staying in this child's pose, just come up onto your fingertips so your elbows and your arms are lifting off of the mat. Crawl the fingers out even further. Get a big stretch here. And planting through your palms. Let's come up. Tabletop pose, but keep your hands past your shoulders. So instead of having them directly underneath, stay a little bit further out. And we're going to inhale forward into this modified plank. And as you exhale, you can lower down, push yourself back up, inhale, and exhale, stretch back, really lengthen through your arms. Let's do that four more times. So inhale, modified plank pose, exhale, tap down, inhale, push up, exhale, press it back. Three more with your own breath. Building up that heat through our shoulders, through the upper body, starting to engage through the core as well. One more here. Inhale, modified plank, and lower. Push back up and press it back. Let's tuck the toes under. Keep your hands where they are, shoulder width distance apart. Find your downward facing dog. So if you're like me and this is your first practice of the day, hamstrings might be really tight. So you can just bend one knee alternating here as you straighten the opposite leg, trying to get your heel down to the floor and just really stretching out in any way that feels good here. We're gonna reach our right leg up towards the sky, bend your right knee, open up your hip. So big thigh stretch in here. And you're gonna tap your knee to your nose, come all the way forward into your plank pose. Try to keep your hips down low. Inhale, three like a dog, lift it up. Exhale, squeeze your knee to your nose, same thing. Last one like this, inhale up. Exhale, squeeze it in, look past your hands and step the right foot through in between your palms to the top of the mat. We're gonna come up into our high lunge. So you want your feet to be hip width distance apart here. Ashta Chandrasana. 
And now strengthening through our quads and through our glutes, you're going to inhale in this high lunge. And as you exhale, reach the arms back and tap your back knee to the floor. So inhale, lift. Exhale, tap. Three more. Twice more, inhale. Exhale, tap the left knee down. Last one, inhale. And exhale. Come back up to neutral. Keep your hands at your heart. From here, all you're going to do, you might want to look at what I'm doing first. We're going to tap our left knee to our right, keeping both knees bent, and then step the foot back. Let's do that four times together. Knees in, step the left foot back. Knees touch, step it back twice more. You'll feel the burn. It's like a one-legged chair pose. And let's find Utkatasana, our chair pose this time. Big toes together. Reach your arms up. Bring your weight back into your heels. One more deep belly breath. Exhale, fold and release. So you can bend your knees as much as you'd like here. For me, the hamstrings are still tight, so I'm not straightening my legs completely. Find a halfway lift, flat back, lift and lengthen. Plant your palms, step the feet back, plank pose, and you can lower down. Bhujangasana, cobra pose. And let's find child's pose, balasana. Give yourself a moment here. And before we go and repeat the sequence over on the other side, we're gonna do something a little bit different. So breaking up the sequence with our forearm plank. So you're going to bring your forearms flat to the floor, palms facing down to the mat. Take up some space, walk your feet back, lift your hips up. And all we're going to do is rock forward a few times and think of tapping your nose between your thumbs. So try to do somewhere between five and ten rounds. Doesn't take long to really feel this through your shoulders. I'm gonna do two more here. And Sphinx pose, release. Open through your chest, roll your shoulders back. <sighs> Slowing down your heart rate. And we'll be making our way back into Downward Facing Dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana, so we can find our standing sequence on the other side. <sighs> and again, just stretch out through your legs. Think of reaching your chest back towards your thighs, curling your tailbone up towards the sky, and wrapping through your shoulders as if you're trying to get your armpits to face one another. Relax your neck and your head. Let's extend our left leg up to the sky. Open up your hip. Get a nice thigh stretch here. And then you can bring your knee to your nose. Come forward into your plank pose. Shoulders over your wrists. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to nose. Squeeze it in. Inhale, reach. Last one. Squeeze it in. Look past your hands to help step that foot through in between your palms. We're coming up into our high lunge. So my shoulders are over my hips. I'm lengthening the tailbone down. I'm reaching my arms up. We're gonna inhale into our high lunge. And as we exhale, arms go back. We tap the right knee down to the floor. Inhale, lift. And lower, three more. Twice more. Last one, inhale. Exhale, tap. Come back through to center. Bring your hands at your heart. We're going to find that one-legged chair pose where you just tap your knees together. And then step the right foot back. Tap it in. And step it back three more. Try to keep your gaze steady to help with balance. Last one. Utkatasana, chair pose. Rock your weight back into your heels. Hug in through the midline, sink a little deeper. <sighs> Let's fold forward, release. <sighs> Halfway lift, flat back, lift and lengthen here. Plant your palms, step the feet back, 
chaturanga, so lower halfway. Inhale, upward facing dog, roll your shoulders back, downward facing dog. And from here, let's just find pigeon pose. We'll stretch everything out, reach your right leg up to the sky, and you can bring your right knee behind your right wrist. Stretch that left leg out further back, even out your pelvis so you're not leaning completely onto that right hip. Keep some of the weight here on the left, and maybe you're working up here, or you can start to fall down. We have five full deep breaths here. <sighs> so even with all this heat that we're building in a short amount of time, try to bring your focus back to your internal experience. So how is this feeling in your body? What's your internal dialogue sounding like? What are you telling yourself about this practice? Are you distracted? Are you present? Try to come back to this intention you want to set for the day ahead. Two more breaths here. Instead of going back to downward facing dog, you can just walk your hands in and lift yourself up. We're gonna find deer pose from here. So you can let yourself roll onto that right hip and bend into your left knee. So I have two 90 degree angles with my knees here. And I'm just going to push my left hip back and start walking my hands back until I get a nice stretch through my inner left thigh. And you really don't need to go back so far here. Taking a few moments here. And we'll come forward once more into your downward facing dog, stepping the right foot back to meet the left. You're welcome to take an extra flow if you'd like, going through your vinyasa. Otherwise, just create some space here in this downward facing dog. We're really stretching out. And we'll be setting ourselves up for pigeon pose on the second side. So left leg stretches up, creates space through that hip joint before bringing your left knee behind your left wrist. Squaring off the hips again here. So just notice where you tend to distribute your body weight through your hips. We don't want it all the way over to the left. We still want some over on the right. And maybe you're staying up nice and tall or you're folding down. <sighs> slow steady five breaths right here try to relax your shoulders your upper back your neck your head really let gravity pull you into this pose rather than struggling against it Noticing where you might still be carrying tension. And we'll start to lift ourselves back up. We're coming into our deer pose. So you can lean and just rock your weight over onto that left hip and bend your right knee. So you have a 90 degree angle with this right knee, 90 degree angle with the left as well. And we're gonna roll and kind of push that right hip down and back as you also walk your hands back. So I'm kind of in a diagonal here, facing towards the top corner of my mat as opposed to the top of the mat. We don't get a lot of opportunity for internal hip rotation in yoga, there aren't many poses that activate and use this. So deer pose is really one of the few that we have. So if you're really tight here, just know you're not alone. The more you do it, the more comfortable this will become with time. And we'll find our last downward facing dog, stretch everything out, make any little final movements and adjustments, maybe take a last flow, 
going from plank to chaturanga to your back bend. We all meet back in this down dog as we stretch it out. And now let's find our puppy pose. Bring your knees to the floor. Keep your hips where they are, directly over the top of your knees, and just walk your hands out in front of you. I like to actually grab my mat. I find it's a little bit easier for me to do this pose, and I also have been working on this pose lately by bringing my chin to the floor. Please don't do this if you feel it in your neck or in your upper back. It should not be painful. This is not appropriate for everyone. You can instead just bring your forehead down to the floor. So it's really just going to depend on your range of motion, what works best for your shoulders and for your spine. Not here for too long. One more deep breath. Now let's come forward onto our bellies. We're just going to take a line quad stretch before we close our practice. So you can bend into your right knee, grab a hold of your foot, and just pull it in. I like to keep a back bend here, so I'm keeping my chest lifted. You can always just keep your forehead down. And switching sides. You really want to think of pushing your left hip, pushing your pubic bone, and pushing your left knee into the floor. And releasing. Let's come to take a seat. So pretty much with all of my morning yoga classes, I don't usually do Shavasana in case you fall back asleep. So I like to end just by sitting, closing the eyes, a very short grounding. So sit up tall, chin parallel to the floor, relax your shoulders, close your eyes. And take a moment to really observe how you feel now, what effects this short practice has had on your mind, on your body, on your emotions. And see if you can choose one word as your intention for the day. And we'll bring our hands together at the front of the heart, closing together by chanting Om one time. Let's inhale to chant. Breathe in. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing this short strength-based practice with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what your one word intention is today. Mine today is going to be relaxation. That's what I'm calling in. Thank you for practicing with me. Please do subscribe if you don't already. And hopefully I will be practicing again with you very soon, maybe even tomorrow morning. Thanks again.